Welcome to our community, Our Money, the Entrepreneur in You. My name is Brenda Rios and I'm your host for today. And for this show, we'll be speaking with Mr. David Morse, who has over 25 years of global experience in business development and is the principal and president of DBM Consulting. They specialize in negotiation and high value partnerships. He will be sharing more information on this engagement in the new Export Academy program here at HCC. Stay tuned. David, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. <laughs> Tell our viewers a little bit about you and your consulting business. All right. Thank you, Brenda. And thank you to the Houston Community College for hosting this little conversation. Uh, so I have uh, yeah, 25 years, mostly in the industry, uh, energy industry, which is probably pretty understandable given Houston and probably the bulk of your sort of clientele and stuff. I uh, started that experience with a PhD in chemistry, and eventually that led to an international MBA along the way. Um, looking back on everything, I, I, it was all about figuring out puzzles in my career and especially uh, those puzzles that were that had no clear solution. So I'll just say I'm not, not into the, the crossword puzzles. It's very complex ones. Those are attract my attention. Uh, in the industry, I had roles in R&D, commercial, uh, manufacturing, supply chain. So I was very, I'd say, privileged and, and happy that I got a, a breadth of experience. Uh, so the puzzles ended up starting in the lab with uh, molecules that you couldn't see uh, to organizational puzzles uh, in industry and eventually to cross borders. I did international business. In each of those, the, the invisibility of the puzzle is a key sort of attribute. So the most complicated puzzles attracted my attention and the most complicated ones that I ended up uh, coming across were really those that involved people. Uh, across a border, an international situation, and where the negotiation or the communication, communication for a purpose, was about something of high value and long duration. Um, and a few years ago, I decided that's what I really love doing. And uh, as one of my bios ends up saying, I devoted my life mission to, to going down this path. So that's what I've been doing the last few years. The practice is on speaking, uh, the consulting practice, speaking engagements. Uh, it's on uh, training on negotiation or efficient communication and, uh, of course, the consulting part. Uh, all of them are avenues to try and help people, uh, but in addition, they're to help me continuously learn about this field and how people communicate. And I think without being sort of continually refreshed with that, it's not going to, won't be the, as interesting as I otherwise would have. Uh, the information People can go to my website, davidbmorse.com. That's all one word, no dashes or anything. If you put in David Morse, you're, of course, going to come up with a different person. So it's David B. Morse. Um, and um, as part of keeping that refreshment, uh, let's say, or a continuous learning, I'm a member of a number of organizations here in Houston. Uh, and in particular, I'll say uh, the Houston District Export Council. It's an all-volunteer organization. I'm treasurer for them. And that... That's what led me or uh, some led others in the Houston Community College to uh, get involved with the Export Academy. That's amazing. Well, thank you so much for giving us this, you know, uh, intro to what you do and what you, uh, your experience and how you're sharing that with our community. Um, another, you know, you're a part of the Export Academy that we're offering here at HCC. Can you tell our viewers more about what this is and how can people join? Uh, yeah, so that's uh, very good. So the, the Export Academy, uh, as we're filming, this started a few days ago. The current session goes through the end of October, I believe. Uh, it's multi-sessions. Uh, it's a very, I would say, the advantage of it and the, the part of that's going on will be that you're going to do it multiple times. Uh, you'll, I believe, have an Export Academy in the spring again. Um, and in addition, um, it's a fantastic way for people who are interested in exporting just to learn the environment. That is, learn all the parts of it. And it's not necessarily going to give you all the answers, but it should give you a lot of resources for finding out uh, what the landscape of exporting is. You'll, you'll, of course, learn about service providers like myself, but there are a lot of um, 
uh, I'll say volunteer and low cost or no cost opportunities. And just off the top of my head, SCORE, S-C-O-R-E, which is a volunteer organization, sort of branch of the SBA, the Small Business Administration, and the Houston District Export Council, also all volunteer. Both of them are fully dedicated to just trying to help you learn of stuff. And, and the, the Export Academy gets into finance, logistics, so it's got a lot of beneficial parts to, to get someone up to speed on exporting or uh, identify resources for expanding their already uh, export business. That is great. I mean, Houston is such an international, such a global city, right? And a lot of small businesses think that they might not have the infrastructure for it. So, you know, in your experience, what have businesses done, uh, especially now during the pandemic, to prepare for an import-export business? Yeah, so uh, COVID times have been uh, very uh, challenging for all businesses, whether it's domestic or global. Houston is, in a sense, a great place to, to be interested in the topic because there are a lot of resources around, but you, you have to go find them. It's not like they'll just drop in your lap. So during COVID, the, the negatives for export as much as domestic business are exactly the same. The need to manage your cash flow. Uh, to understand what you're doing and why and make sure that whatever investment could be money, could be time, could be something else, uh, doesn't overextend you in risk of whatever kind that would be. I would say that the positive, if, if you can look for a silver lining in the kind of COVID environment, is that if you're interested in exporting or you're trying to figure out a different way to expand your export business, there's unfortunately, a lot of time to let you contemplate that uh, because exporting is not a simple activity. It takes time. It takes a lot of dedication of your thought and energy about what exactly you're after and how you're going to do it. So we've had a, uh, an extra amount of uh, time that's been available in COVID to, to do it. And the, and the advice part, if I were to throw in another piece, is really that uh, for most businesses, really support, grow, and nurture your existing domestic business, because that's what's going to be the foundation for your export in, in any case. Wow, that's, that's just beyond me. <laughs> you know, um, and so how is the HEC helping uh, businesses enter the global market? I mean, you've, you've been a part of the Export Academy, um, maybe also the Minority Business Development Agency, right? Um, so are there any other things that HEC has helped? Um, yeah, I, I think, uh -huh. yeah, I, I, what I'll mention, sort of pick up on something I said earlier was at the Houston Community College, I think, uh, what strikes me is that they they understand their mission. So it's a community college in a big city, who are their clientele and their mission to support them. And so there are a lot of training courses that are available at Houston Community College. Uh, some of them are free or like the Export Academy, it's only uh, like 20 bucks for, I think it's six sessions over two months or so. Uh, and there's a lot of information. So, uh, there, this is sort of Houston Community College and the Minority Business Development Agency uh, and other organizations around uh, Houston and, and the country, the, they're trying to provide help, often government supported in some way, that the, the, the greatest disadvantage is that people don't know about them. So that's part of back to the engagement, whether it's for Houston Community College or, or any other place a person who's interested in the topic needs to go search it out, but there's lots there. Absolutely. And we're just so excited to have you as an expert, you know, to talk about this topic. So when we return from our break, we will continue our conversation with Mr. David Morse and his experience in global negotiations. Additionally, I want to remind everyone to check out our Goldman Sachs 10,000 Small Businesses Program under the Entrepreneurial Initiatives Department department to continue to have new cohorts for the fall and the spring. The Goldman Sachs program has transitioned online, so you can get all of this information on this program on our website at hccs.edu slash small business. This program continues to move forward towards its goal to help 10,000 small businesses. So see if you qualify and we'll be right back.
When I was your age, I was just like you, fascinated by stars. But now I get to search for life in the universe. And who knows, maybe life is looking for us too. So we're like aliens to them? Yeah. Does anyone want to be a scientist now? I do. Awesome. We need more girls in STEM. Maybe we can find aliens. The faculty at HCC represents the best of the city. They're committed to getting our students to their goals. HCC, for everyone, anytime, any way. Welcome back to our community, Our Money, the entrepreneur in you. I would like to welcome back Mr. David Morse to the show. Hi, David. Hi, Brenda. Thanks. Thanks again. <laughs> and so you're telling us a little bit more about the import export business market we have here in Houston. What are some of the resources you can recommend uh, for our small businesses to use and to get started with an exporting business? Yeah, uh, again, a real advantage of Houston, big city, metropolitan, there are a lot of resources. There are a lot of free and even some few uh, uh, low cost resources and uh, some of the big ones that I think uh, I used as starting my business and I would recommend almost anyone starting with is SCORE, which is part of the Small Business uh, Administration. That's a all volunteer group of uh, principally people uh, who have retired and, and are really experts in their field. Um, I would also say the organization that I'm treasurer of, the Houston uh, DEC or District Export Council, that's an affiliate of the U.S. Department of Commerce. Uh, both organizations, uh, among others, but as uh, top of my head uh, sort of uh, thought here, um, both organizations, their sole purpose is to help people find resources, answer questions. Uh, SCORE is a little bit more directed toward the informal chat of, you know, talk with a lawyer and so you can understand what, what an LLC is versus a corporation, et cetera. The DEC is more oriented toward uh, someone who's a little further in the journey and says, hey, I need to find a person that does this. You know, uh, like a couple of days ago, there was a conversation about uh, someone interested in livestock. So, okay, if that's the case, that's what you're trying to figure out how to export, finding that kind of resource. So, and it's all volunteer, both organizations, uh, as well as uh, places like the Houston Community College, have events, and if they do cost, they're generally very low. Export Academy that we're talking about, it was only, it was only 20 bucks, uh, any case. So I think what I wanna reinforce in that is, uh, or add to it, I suppose, is that you really are going to need to talk to people because you have a particular idea of what you wanna export, where you wanna export it to, so what location and why. So, please don't rely solely on web searches and, and stuff. There's a lot of information out there, but to put it in context, and since I am very focused in my uh, consulting practice on negotiation, uh, context is basically everything. And so uh, to talk over with someone, what it is you're after is the faster way to an answer because uh, the last thing you wanna do is get confused about everything and, and that just stops you in your tracks. Absolutely. And I mean, it's, it's, even though it's a global world, I mean, cultures, differences, you know, different politics, different rules to follow. So I am sure that following the regulations uh, take a step, you know, or like understanding the legalities behind the business, correct? Yeah, uh, one of many areas that Export Academy is covering now, or, or will cover over those sessions. But yeah, there's, there are a lot of, uh, I, I like the term, a lot of moving pieces in getting into export. It's the same as doing regular business and just an added level of complexity. Absolutely. Well, so you are known as the negotiation catalyst uh, here in town. And so tell us a little bit more about your role in the services and global business negotiations that you do. Okay, yeah, sure, <laughs> thank you. Um, so I, I, I like the negotiation catalyst and it's usually used negotiation catalyst speaker but I like it for multiple reasons. One is my life is devoted towards the communication for a purpose, that is negotiation. And catalyst, well, I'm a chemist, uh, started as chemist, I actually started in catalysis. And so the whole idea of where to, uh, how, how to help others 
and be not the person negotiating. I spend 25 years uh, doing my own deals, but to help other people excel. And it, there's a lot of pleasure in doing that. Of course, I want to make money, but the purpose isn't so much in making money as continuous learning and seeing others succeed. I, I had a client recently that was negotiating actually a job change and it was very pleasurable to see the person get it uh, with the job they wanted with a promotion and a pay raise. It's just, that's just, that Dream makes me very happy. <laughs> Absolutely. And so uh, we'll be back. Please remember that the Entrepreneurial Initiatives Department has so many areas under its department to reach the students, communities, and entrepreneurs. There are so many opportunities and resources, just like Mr. David uh, just mentioned right now. Uh, for small business owners, you don't have to be a huge corporation. Um, and this is through the Entrepreneurial Initiatives Department, such as the Corporate College. The Corporate College is in partnership with the Texas Workforce Commission, and they provide funding opportunities through the Skills Development Fund and the Skills for Small Business Program that can be used to train employees at no cost to your business. So to access more information about the, um, uh, this program, Corporate College, please visit our website at hcs.edu small business. We'll be right back. When I was in foster care, I never knew when I would have to move. So I always had my suitcase ready to go. Then one day I was adopted. My new parents opened their hearts and home to me. My parents cook my favorite breakfast for me every morning. My parents take me on trips I never thought I would go on. They gave me a home and an even better reason to use that suitcase. My parents aren't perfect, but they're perfect for me. Natural disasters are a fact of life in the U.S. And between activities and school, chances are you won't be with your kids when they happen. Will they know what to do? Ready.gov slash kids can help your children feel prepared, not scared. So talk with your family today. The faculty at HCC represents the best of the city. They're committed to getting our students to their goals. A four-year degree. Workforce training. A better life. HCC, for everyone, anytime, any way. Welcome back, everyone. We are here with Mr. David Morse, who is sharing amazing recommendations on how a small business owner can be a good exporter in Houston and how they can grow their market. Welcome back, David. Thank you very much, Brenda. What will you say are some key traits to global negotiations? Uh, the, so <clears throat> part of my practice really is that the tools that we use for negotiation are common whether it's family or community or uh, a company or international domestic, but the main uh, commonality is hidden elements. You, you think that in an international environment, oh, it's because the language and the, the, the culture, different stuff, but there are more similarities than differences, whether you talk about global negotiation or domestic negotiation. It is perhaps easier globally or across a border language or culture because those are, they're more obvious in a sense, but they might feel more uh, challenging or, or you, you can't surmount them. But my practice is really devoted toward having or, or identifying, making sure everyone realizes that the tools they use are innate. And if you recognize them and you practice them, you will be a better negotiator in environments that you're uncomfortable with, like say global, a different culture, uh, or people you don't know. So global is definitely different. There's some easier parts that are different, but patience, listening, introspection, creativity, those, those are the things that will help you see similar, more similarities than differences and be more successful. That is amazing. I mean, people will think like culturally, the patients, it's just different trades. So some people like freeze with thinking they can do business globally because they don't understand that culture, correct? Right. Um, but that is definitely some a skill uh, to develop um, and to understand and start networking. So, you know, I'm, I'm quite curious, like the, the people that you work with, 
Did they come to you with a specific um, just strategy that they use locally? And then um, how do you like help them to actually open up globally? Uh, so uh, the to engage in a global uh, expansion, that's what you're really sort of asking and driving As, towards? Absolutely, or? yes. You know, sometimes, so, sometimes people think it's like, it's only exporting their services, not even thinking of being able to import and export um, to both sides. So is there like a strategy or a tool that you use or, or give out as suggestions to them? Yeah, it's there's no single one. Uh, I think the what I mentioned earlier about uh, exporting is that it's complicated. You need to do your homework. Uh, you need to be patient. Uh, it requires investment, whether that be money or time. And usually it's a lot of time on your part, on an entrepreneur's part. Uh, mm -hmm. It's all about risk management of some sort. You have to understand why you're doing the investment costs and risks. So it, it, nothing about exporting will get dropped in your lap. You will find resources to help you out. But a lot of times they're going to say, okay, well, what is it you want to do? Why are you doing this? You know, to probe whether you've actually uh, understood and are understanding your investment. So it's a, however you want to phrase an investment and risk management system, it's that uh, expanding into unfamiliar territory. Right. And, and I think that's what makes people more nervous. Um, but, you know, there are so many opportunities now. E-commerce, right, is also another hot topic for small businesses owners right now, uh, especially given the pandemic and um, not necessarily just exporting um, a product, but also doing through online. Right. So in case that they don't have the infrastructure to get started right now, what, what do you think or what will you say are the top three goals? business owners should do to enter the e-commerce market? Um, it's going to be, to be honest, uh, standard marketing or business planning, which is why the Export Academy starts with business planning or your international business plan, because e-commerce is uh, highly valuable, It's but it's valuable as an added channel. Uh, you still have to do all your homework on, just to take the marketing language, the product placement, price, and promotion. Given that, then you have an added channel. And, but if you wanted to do, or if you thought it was important to do something for exporting that was due early, and so you might wanna get your website up earlier, sooner rather than later, is because of branding. It's a, it's a mechanism to get your brand in front of an audience that is distant and remote. And I, you know, there may be few other ways to do that. So uh, the e-commerce will come in time, and yes, if you're doing a product, if you're selling a product or exporting a product, it's different than exporting a service. Uh, but nevertheless, in either case, you want to get your brand and its value in front of an audience. And it's a, it's a remarkably straightforward, easy, and everyone expects a way to do that across a, an ocean or a border of any kind. Right, with all the technologies and transportation that you know that we have now globally i think it's definitely a service that can increase the, the, the exposure global exposure and, and marketing um, to a business um what would you say um some people are also saying you know there are some delays in shipments when it comes to bringing in their products here uh, in the u.s um do you know anything about that or, or why that is happening and um, you know, is that a risk for uh, import and export businesses? Yeah, it's absolutely a risk. And I'm assuming you're talking particularly around, let's just call them COVID times. Is that right? It's absolutely. Yes, yeah. definitely. Yeah. Okay. Pandemic. yeah. So what you read in the news is absolutely correct. Supply chains that over the, at least the last decade, if not more, had been, uh, you know, stretched and moved, but but established and everyone expected just-in-time activities of whatever kind, uh, COVID has thrown a wrench into that. And so uh, whether you uh, see it as a, you can't get a product in a store that you want, or if you're exporting, you have trouble finding a container that to ship it overseas or the price is different. The, the, yeah, everything you read about, or the, or I'll just add to it if you want to count that as price increases, inflation, and that sort of stuff, it is all related to supply chain. And so if, if that is that is definitely important in an export business, because I think I mentioned earlier, the risk elements uh, for exporting are higher than domestic, and that's one of them. Um, 
Uh, and if you're interested in that, certainly you'll want to establish a good relationship with a logistics firm uh, mm -hmm. that understands literally the places you want to go. Uh, that is not just globally, but you know, let's say to Europe or to Africa or Asia or wherever it would be. Absolutely. And well, and to sum it up, do you have any last words or recommendations for our viewers today? Yeah, I probably the biggest thing, which if you if your audience doesn't know, but should is that about three quarters of the world economy is outside of the US. So exporting is or can be very lucrative. It takes effort, though. So you, you need to do, be patient. You need to do your homework. But it's an exciting uh, growth avenue for businesses if you plan your investments properly. And that's what I would encourage for anyone, whether it's a domestic or international business. I love it. Well, thank you so much, David, for being here with us and for your time and awesome suggestions for our viewers today. Um, and I would like to just, you know, as always, like to close with a motivational quote from Kevin O'Leary. So much of life is a negotiation. So even if you're not a business, you have opportunities to practice all around you. Thank you guys. <laughs> and until next, and thanks for watching so much for our community, our money, the entrepreneur and you. Have a good day. How prepared is your family if disaster shows up at your doorstep? You can't just turn away a natural disaster. That's why it's important to go to ready.gov slash plan before they show up. It has the tools and tips you need to make an emergency plan with your family. So if disaster comes knocking, Let's go. you'll be ready to help keep your family safe. It's just a pizza. Yes! Make a plan today. If you love them enough to do this, surely you'll check nitsa.gov slash the right seat to make sure they're in the right car seat.